My name is Bob Silicano, and my wife Janet and I run a lab here at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. We study antiretroviral therapy for HIV infection. Therapy is now very good, but it's not curative. And the reason is that the virus can persist in a latent form in resting memory CD4 cells. And this latent reservoir, as we call it, is extremely stable. So when patients interrupt therapy, virus can emerge from this reservoir and disease progression will continue. This reservoir arises as a consequence of normal T cell physiology. When a resting CD4 cell encounters antigen, it undergoes blast transformation and proliferates, generating activated effector cells. Most of these die at the conclusion of the immune response, but a small fraction survive and revert back to a resting state as long-lived memory T cells. These cells allow future responses to the same antigen. HIV uh, preferentially infects activated cells and tends to kill them very quickly. But on rare occasions, it can infect an activated cell as it's transitioning back to a resting state, which is non-permissive for HIV gene expression. This results in a stably integrated but transcriptionally silent form of the virus in a long-lived memory T cell. And if this cell becomes activated again in the future, it can begin to produce virus. There's now intense interest in these latently infected cells because they represent a major barrier to curing the infection. Unfortunately, they're very, very difficult to study because they're rare. Generally, only about one cell in a million harbors latent HIV. And because the virus is latent, uh, these cells are indistinguishable from uninfected cells. So how do we study these cells? Resting CD4 cells are isolated from the blood of patients on antiretroviral therapy, plated in limiting dilution, and then subjected to uh, activation with a mitogen. T-cell activation reverses latency, and wells that contain a latently infected cell will come to have a free virus in the supernatant. Interestingly, the frequency of latently infected cells detected with this virus outgrowth assay is about two logs lower than the frequency of infected cells detectable by PCR. And the discrepancy between these two assays for the latent reservoir has never been explained and is the subject of a study by Yachi Ho, which is described in this paper. So we characterized proviruses from culture wells that were inactive for viral outgrowth. Although these non-induced proviruses failed to produce replicating virus after one round of maximum T cell activation in vitro, it was not clear whether they could be reactivated in vivo. Therefore, we carried out full-length single genome sequence analysis of large number of viral clones from patients. We found that about one-third of the non-induced proviruses were lethally hypermutated by the host enzyme APOBAC3G, while about half contain large internal deletions and other defects. None of these proviruses are replication competent. However, about 12% were intact at primary sequence level. We reconstructed these intact non-induced proviruses and showed that they could give rise to replication competent virus if induced in vitro. We also showed that the non-induced proviruses had functional non-methylated promoter regions and were integrated into active host genes. Therefore, it appears that these non-induced proviruses have the potential to become induced in vivo. This slide illustrates the size of the latent reservoir in different patients. This is the size as assessed by DNA-PCR. As we have shown, most of these proviruses are defective. This is the size of the reservoir as measured by the viral outgrowth assay. However, if we consider the intact non-induced proviruses, the actual size of the reservoir is much larger. This work provides us with a better understanding of the true size of the latent reservoir. If all of the intact non-induced proviruses can be induced in vivo, then the true size of the reservoir is about 60-fold greater than previously estimated. Curing HIV infection will require finding a way to reactivate all of the viruses that have a potential to rekindle the infection in vivo.